Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, a terrible homeowner association sued a Vietnam veteran for having a service dog. They claim the dog violates HOA by laws and sued the old man. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the story. The title story starts like this. This story is not about me, but is actually about one of my neighbors who is a Vietnam veteran. He has given me permission to tell this story online after I got him interested in these kinds of stories. We are actually pretty close and since he lives alone, I always invite him over for holidays if he is alone or just to watch baseball. Getting back on the topic of this story, he is disabled and relies on a service dog for everyday tasks. His service dog is a beautiful German Shepherd that is just the sweetest girl in the entire world. As a service dog, she is better behaved than most humans I've come across and I could not imagine anybody having an issue with her. That is except for the HOA president who does not approve of the dog and thinks she had any say in it. I did not know how long my neighbor was having issues with her, but I did manage to catch a conversation between the two of them. After that I was just fully invested to throw myself into the situation to help my neighbor. HOA president, I've told you before that this creature needs to leave. Neighbor, I'm allowed to have my service dog. HOA president, I'm not telling you not to have one. I'm saying that this thing is not a dog, it's basically a bear. Look around and you will see that all the other dog owners have nice cute small dogs. They don't intimidate anybody and don't lower property values like your monster. Neighbor, I need a dog this size. She is mine and does important tasks for me. Now please move so I can get on with my day. HOA president, your dog is gonna bite some innocent child and then we'll see what happens. You need to follow the rules no matter how old you are and how disabled you pretend to be. Neighbor, I've told you before, I'm not a member of your HOA. Even if what you were saying had any truth to it, it still wouldn't apply to me. HOA president, we'll see what you think of that once I'm finished with you. She walked off after this and I was able to go and make sure that he was okay. He might be on the older side, but this guy is tough as nails and was not gonna be intimidated by a woman made of hairspray and acrylic nails. He was going to just go on with his life because he had the ADA on his side. Laws that protected him against anybody trying to discriminate against him and that included taking his dog away from him. The HOA must have not told their lawyers the truth or just been crazy because they actually filed a lawsuit against my neighbor for his dog. They claim total lies that he had a violent animal that went against HOA guidelines. He cannot drive anymore so I went with him to court to argue his case that he didn't do anything wrong. Which to me was kind of funny that to argue his dog being a service dog he got to bring her to court with him. The judge was gonna be able to see flat out how well behaved she was and that she was a real service animal. It was closed and I had to wait outside but I got the details of what happened from my neighbor on the car ride home. The HOA was trying to claim that he was violating rules because he was intentionally doing actions that would lower the value of the neighborhood and the homes in it. They were also claiming that he was harboring a dangerous creature that was a threat to all the members of the community. I couldn't even get past the first part without just laughing at how crazy this woman was. Thank god I was not in court or I would have been kicked out and in trouble for the laughter. When it was made clear that his dog was a service animal and having the dog did not devalue the neighborhood and went against HOA rules, they tried to argue something else. The HOA wanted him to get a dog from a pre-approved list and basically swap his service animal for a tiny one. While some small breeds can be service animals, he needed help that only a larger animal could help with. Not to mention it was just against so many laws to make him get rid of a service animal. The court did not want to hear anything from the HOA and told them that they were not gonna do anything against the HOA or force somebody who was not even a member to follow their rules. A couple of months later when he was taking a walk, the HOA president was out and got super angry at him, basically on sight. She went insane and decided that attacking was the correct thing to do. She did not attack my neighbor, oh no, she went after the helpless dog like she was the one personally doing anything wrong. No matter how well a dog is trained when under attack, it's gonna defend itself. It's the law of nature or fight or flight or something. To make a long story short, because this is already getting long, she got bitten by the dog while attacking her. Suddenly she was the victim and the dog just went wild and was a vicious horrible creature according to her. You can probably guess what her plan was, but she made the dumb decision to do this right in front of a park entrance and they had cameras. 
Before she could do anything, my neighbor jumped the gun and filed a lawsuit against the HOA. For discrimination and for hurting his service animal, it turned out that in the attack their dog got broken ribs and a broken foot. He wanted a lot of compensation from the HOA and once the court saw that it was her again, they were not gonna believe her anything. Sure, she tried to claim that the dog just attacked randomly, but there was clear video of her going after the dog first and it basically being self-defense. All of this to try and turn around the argument of her not being a service dog because they don't bite no matter what supposedly. Like they are trained super soldiers or something. ADA law is a powerful thing though and the courts have a strong tendency to side with it. After they finished racking up fines for her, the HOA ended up owing my neighbor $225,000. Don't ask me the math of how they ended up on that number, but he was granted all of it and the HOA was now going to be financially hurting because of that. Thankfully the HOA president did not last much longer after that whole fiasco either as it was a bad image for the HOA. I have no idea where the money went, but I do know that he got a big new TV that we watch all the time. And yeah, ripe stars, if you still enjoy the HOA stories, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even leave a comment because that would help me tremendously. The next one is an I don't work here lady hospital story. I work in a hospital, also context, I have a baby face and I'm short. On any given day, I can be mistaken for a high school student playing dress up, so I don't really begrudge people for mistaking me for a volunteer. Unless, of course, you are mean. It's a weekend and I'm scheduled to work 28 hours. In my hospital our staff are pretty distinctive, nurses wear white, surgical staff wear blue and techs and other staff wear black. I am wearing the baggy surgical scrubs to be as comfortable as possible while in hell. I'm rushing around trying to see my patients and stop by to say hi to a few nurses I recognize. We chat a little and no one asks me where I'm going. I mention the patient room and they give each other looks. Bad sign. Before looking at me and assuring they would check in, bad sign number two. I thank them and then I dip into the patient room. Me, hi patient, visibly irritated, about time you came in here. I am done with my food. Me, okay, do you want me to clear that tray for you? Patient looks at me like a dumbass. Well, I'm done with it, aren't I? All right then, grumpy guy, whatever, it happens. I go to move the tray and notice his wife sitting in a chair by his bed. She is looking apologetic to me and moves to take the tray, but I wave her off and settle it to the side. Me, hi I'm, patient, I need to go to the bathroom. Me, okay, I can come back if you would like. Patient again looking at me like I'm a dumbass, I need to go to the bathroom. Me, sir, you're welcome to use the restroom, I can come back when you're done. This place is ridiculous, you're not even gonna help me? I'm out of major surgery and you cannot help me get up and piss. Me pulling out my patient list more for show than anything else because I have it memorized. This person had finger surgery in his non-dominant hand. He has one completely unwrapped hand and his legs work fine. According to my record, sir, you passed your physical therapy yesterday and you have unlimited ability to get in and out of bed and move on your own. However, I can also provide a urinal for you if you would like. Patient yelling, this is ridiculous. I just had major surgery. I'm in pain. You want me to just lie in my own piss? You should be helping me. Hold my cucumber like a good girl and help me. At this point I see a few nurses duck their head in to check on me, but I wave them off. This dude needs an ego check. Me, sir, that's a highly inappropriate request. If you need assistance with your needs, we will provide it. But we will not tolerate being verbally harassed. Patient, I'm not effing listening to some damn nurse telling me what to do. You better do your job. Patient's wife, she is not a nurse. Patient, I don't even care what she is. I'm not listening to your damn BS if you don't help me. I don't ever want to see you again. Me, just to confirm, sir, that you don't want to see me again, right? Patient, did I stutter? I say go away, little girl. I want a new nurse. At this point, his nurse steps into the room with hospital security, the kind who are built like NFL linebackers, responding to psych issues and have handcuffs. Nurse, Dr. OP, I called security out of concern for staff safety. Security officer, are you okay and do you require assistance? Me, no, but I would like you two to witness for me that the patient would no longer require our services and pain management will sign off now per patient insistence. I will alert his surgery team. Nurse and security officer nods. Nurse makes a note in her papers. 
Patient is now visibly buffering as he's processing. Patient loading probably at 50%. Wait, doctor, with pain management? Me, yes, I'm the pain management doctor. Your team wanted me to see you assess your post-operative pain, but I understand that we are not needed anymore. I let your team know. Patient anger downloaded. You could have told me. You're leaving? I want a new pain dog. Me smiling serenely. Sir, it's the weekend. I'm the only pain management doctor. As the two other witnesses have noted, you have fired me from your care. Good day. I go off on my merry way as this guy starts going ballistic. It's not standard for the pain service to be asked to see a hand surgery, but I did it as a favor to the orthopedic surgeon since the patient is, quoting the surgeon, a little bitch about his finger pain. I then ask the nurse to let me know what happens when the patient realized that I am the only one in the hospital who can write for high dose narcotics that he keeps demanding. And the next one is a malicious compliance story. In my late high school slash early college years, I had a job doing telemarketing work during winter and summer breaks. While it was boiler room cold calling, we primarily were soliciting donations for agencies that had contracted us to do the work, so it felt less scoozy. Think police departments, fire departments, etc. We kept a portion of donations for operating expenses. Everything over a certain threshold went directly to the receiving party and everybody wins. I enjoyed the job as the scripts were simple and I was allowed to read a book and such between calls and a number of my friends were also employed there so we could hang out during lunch breaks. The pay was a decent chunk above minimum wage at that time, so it was a good gig. I also had a knack for it and at one point was fifth in sales across all their sites they had in operation, second in our building. One summer while driving to work, my car promptly dies with no warning and I'm left stranded on the road. As you do in this situation back before cell phones for poor college students were a thing, I walk to the nearest house and ask to use the phone. I call my dad who starts driving to get me and call my work to let them know that I'll be late. My boss says fine and that he will chat with me when I get in. Father shows up with my mother in two cars, I take the extra and he begins the arduous process of towing my car back to the house. This involved tying a rope to the front of the car and to the back of his vehicle and crawling back home so he could fix it himself. I have been in that back car and did not envy my father being in the back car with only 10 feet of space between him and the car my mom was driving, but I'm off to work. I arrive to work clock in almost an hour after the start of my shift and I am promptly told by the front receptionist that my boss would like to see me in his office. So I head on back. Beginning details completed, cue the start of the MC story. My boss and I have always had a good report. I'm a good worker, get good reviews and he and I have some similar interests outside of work we can chat about occasionally. When I arrive in his office he is shuffling some papers around and has laid out a few documents facing me. As close as I can recall, this is the conversation that followed. Boss, I hope everything worked out with the car. Glad to have you here. Couple things I need to discuss with you. So first of all, as I'm sure you are aware, being more than 30 minutes late to work is considered a class C violation, three classes from C to A, C being the least egregious, if insufficient time is given prior to the occurrence. This is your first violation, so I would like to talk to you about what happens next. I'm sweating at this point, I've never been talked to about being out of order on anything while working here and getting my first violation scared the crap out of me. So I'm sitting there white faced and he continues. Boss, no official write up or anything occurs for a first violation or even the first few class C violations, but it is manager's discretion on the punishment depending on past behaviors. Now you're a good employee and I've put into corporate a few times to give you a raise. But because you only work during your school breaks, it's denied as you are not considered full time. So the papers I have here are your termination papers and an offer letter I would like to extend to you to hire you back on time again. So in short, before I file these, I would like to ask, is it okay if I fire you? So we go through the process of him firing me, which then allowed him to extend an offer to me to rehire me at roughly a 25% increase in pay since he could justify to corporate the bump as he was hiring someone with experience. In talking with him, he let me know it was something he occasionally did to the high school and college workers to get around the corporate policy of not allowing raises to people that did not work 1000 plus hours in a year. It was his own way of being maliciously compliant with a policy that did not allow him to reward some people that he thought deserved it. He had been apparently waiting for me to do something that he could technically fire me for. The way their back-end systems worked, it would not even show up as a break in service since the firing and hiring happened on the same day and since I never worked more than the minimum 1000 hours each year, I did not have any tenure or anything to be worried about losing. 
the laugh he and the receptionist had when we walked back to the front to introduce her to the new employee was enjoyable and I've had a fun story to tell ever since. To answer a few questions, number one, why do the fire department and police department need more money? This was more for affiliated agencies and charities. Think the firefighters boot drive they do every year. They don't keep your change you toss into the boot. It goes to a charitable cause. Number two, did your dad fix the car slash what was wrong with it? I'm not a car person so I don't know what was wrong with it but yes my dad was able to fix it. Number three, do you keep in touch with the boss? Well this was close to 20 years ago and unfortunately I don't keep in touch with very many people from my hometown including this wonderful man. Last I heard he was still working there four to five years after I had left and it was still a great place to work. Many of your comments had me laughing and I've enjoyed responding to them throughout the day and into the wee hours of the morning last night and they are still coming in. Thank you all again for this enjoyable experience. And yeah, ripe stars, I have to say that was a different outcome than I expected. That was a truly positive malicious compliance story. I'm not sure I've read many different malicious compliance stories before that had such an outcome. Either way, let me know in the comments whether you also enjoy these malicious compliance stories. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. Hello all, my name is Jamal and along with my wife, 15 year old son and elderly father, we recently had to move due to structural damages on the old house. We were lucky to find a similar house in the same area so that we did not need to go through the trouble of finding new jobs or a new school for Jason, our son though. None of us are strangers to hardship but neither did we expect the hassle that would come from a certain someone. It turns out the neighborhood is managed by a local HOA but our house somehow falls outside the range of their control. So while we do pay a small amount monthly for our share of the neighborhood upkeep, we are not subject to their rules or standards. It is an odd system but it gives us a little more freedom than our neighbors so I cannot complain. The first day we started moving our stuff into the house, we had our first encounter with a new neighbor, Karen, the president of the local HOA. The sun began to disappear over the horizon as we collapsed beside the pool in the yard to rest after a long day. The moving vans had left and it was just us and our boxes now. As we sat and chat under the porch light, we saw a figure hustling over to us under the torchlight. The woman began to question who we were, why we were here, what we wanted, etc. And we sat quiet in disbelief that someone, after watching us move furniture into the house all day, would suspect us of being intruders or burglars. And yeah guys, obviously Karen is not exactly the sharpest tool in this shed. Either way, I tried to explain the situation to her but I could tell she was not buying it. Despite my best efforts, she even seemed to be getting angrier as if it were a bad cop routine. Her last words before she turned to storm off were that this is no house for a black family to live. We heaved a collective sigh and retired for the evening. Over the course of the next week, as we are slowly beginning to settle down after the fiasco of a first impression Karen left, she emerged again from underneath her deep ignorance. This time she seemed to be going door to door posting catalogs and I was unlucky enough to be mowing the grass out front when she came by. Rather than post it through our door, she stomped her way up to me and shoved the catalog into my hands, peering down from her tinted sunglasses disapprovingly before continuing her path up the street. I flipped through what looked like a chunky update to the rules and regulations for residents of the local HOA. I threw it on the porch as I continued my work, not prepared to read through or memorize stuff that did not apply to us here. As we all were eating dinner a few hours later into the afternoon, we heard a series of hard knocks against the front door, almost startling us like a rude awakening. There stood Karen holding a catalogue in her hands, furious that we had left it outside to be destroyed by the rainfall. I stood in silent defiance across the doorway. Despite the rain, I was not about to let an unwelcome guest as rude as she was in to take shelter so she could continue her angry ranting longer. She asked to be let in and I tried to play it off saying that we were currently busy and at dinner, not expecting guests and Karen took this as a sign of hostility which only threw her into another outburst about rules we had to follow if we wanted to keep living here. After she simmered down, I managed to give a brief reply. Our house is not managed by the HOA, so your rules don't apply here. 
For the first time since we have met her, Karen's face shifted from boiling rage to pale shock and she stormed off without a retort. Was she embarrassed or perhaps shocked that she had no power over us? The next morning my wife goes to the mailbox and finds it hard to open the front door, but after some effort we find a pile of catalogs and leaflets left stacked against the door with no one else around. The stack contained HOA material with titles such as benefits to joining your HOA and an HOA application form that looked handwritten, so the mystery was quickly solved as to who left them, not wishing to indulge the crazy lady, we took them inside but did not read them. My wife then texted her back, thanking her for the papers but told her again that we had no interest in joining their HOA, but she did not reply. After a week of peace and quiet, we began to receive fines in the mail from the HOA for minor grievances and it looked like Karen had not gotten the message yet. We were worried if we could still be prosecuted, but our attorney assured us these were empty threats, so I ignored her. Our issues with Karen escalated when my son went out for groceries and had been stopped by police for an inspection after an anonymous tip that he was carrying drugs. I was furious at the blatant racism and disrespect not to mention the embarrassment it caused my son in his own neighborhood. He said that he saw Karen standing at her window on a call, so suspected that she was probably behind it. I stormed over to Karen's house and ripped into her with insults and threats as blind rage overcame me, I left when I was finished before letting her reply. She hurried back inside and slammed the door seemingly in a state of shock or panic. After that we thought we saw the last of her, my tirade had finally put a stop to her insistence and orders and then we had one more surprise, one terrible fateful night. It must have been very late evening or early morning when I was suddenly woken up to my wife shaking me and looking panicked, smoke filled the corridor outside like a layer of thick fog and had begun to curl into the bedroom. After waking everyone up, we escaped downstairs and found a safe exit out of the building before I went back inside to call for help. Within minutes, a few neighbors had burst out of their homes in full kit. It turns out we had firefighters locally and they began to assess the situation. Ten minutes since we got out, we sat on the front yard as the fire sirens drew closer with flashing lights that woke and intrigued other neighbors who had come to investigate. The fire was quickly put out with little damage, the front door was charred black and there was smoke damage inside but my family were okay, so that could all be dealt with later. Police arrived later to disperse the crowd back to their beds as we spoke to the firefighters. They identified the cause of the fire to be a stack of paper soaked in gasoline and propped up against the front door prompting suspicion that requires police intervention. A week later Karen was identified as the culprit after a number of reports against her from other neighbors came to light, as well as an eyewitness from a late jogger. The HOA president was replaced by a kind elderly man and Karen was sentenced to 5 years behind bars. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.